Happy New Year, everybody. By the time you see in this video, we are already in the year 2024. Whoa! 2023 for me was a definite bounce back year for me after 2022, which, um, sucked. But hopefully those watching this ended 2023 on a good note and are going into the new year uh, on a great start. You know how I'm going into this new year? In stitches. You guess I could say I slipped on an ice cube and got covered in boo-boos. But those boo-boos are stitches and I did not slip on an ice cube and those ice cube were glass. I cut myself with glass. <laughs> this injury probably could have turned out worse than it did. And you know who I have to thank for that? God. Or Jesus, even. Don't you love Jesus? But for those who have been subscribed to me for a while, and if you're not, you, you should go do that right now, please, thank you. I haven't brought up God and or Jesus like this in a video before. The last time I did was in a video back in May 2023. The subject of that video had to do with a God-loving chipmunk named Chatter. Which now thinking about it, I'm literally uploading back-to-back -back videos on chipmunks. And as you can see now, my hand, my hand, my hand, my hand. Ah, my hand, my hand, my hand. The shirt has changed to something similar from that video. You know what that means? It means we're doing another chatter video, baby. Chatter back in 2024. Give it up for chatter, baby. Let's hear it for chatter. Come on, chatter, 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 chatter. chatter. <sighs> Yeah, we're doing another Chatter Chipmunk video. But for those who haven't seen my video on Chatter or don't even know what Chatter Chipmunk is, I highly recommend you check that video out right here. That has me discussing it in more detail and going in depth with the other activities surrounding it. For a brief short summary about it, my first experience encountering Chatter Chipmunk was back when I was a little kid. Every year in the summer for five days, I'd go to church and experience something called Vacation Bible School, VBS for short. Some point in the day, they'll have us watch an episode of Chatter Chipmunk while also giving us a little plastic buddy that goes along with the message of that episode. Those little plastic buddy things are called BMBs. And no, that doesn't stand for Belgium Mountain Bikers. It stands for Bible Memory Buddies. Gotcha with that one. I was gonna repeat a joke, but I kinda did. Now about the movie, show, whatever you wanna classify it as. Chatter Chimunk is Christian media, but good. Think of it as like on the level of Veggie Tales, where it's entertaining and funny. It can be a little cringe at some points. Basically what I'm trying to say is, this is good Christian media? And this is bad. Some of the funny does come from the decisions they make in these movies. Like for example, in the first one I talked about, The Missing Pandas, there was a character known as Pops. We love Pops. We stand for Pops. That's enough said. But anytime that character said something that started with the letter P, he would very po punctuate it, saying the letter P, you know, Pops Panda Paradise. Playground. Positively. Pandas. Pickle. Forget the pickled people. Poop. <laughs> They have some of the chatter episodes on this channel called Life Tree Kids, but this one, this one I'm watching, was not on there. Ooh, shocker. In fact, this one was actually uploaded five years ago. Somehow I missed it when I was watching the Missing Pandas one. So I thought it'd be a good idea to watch it now, just in the off chance of Chatter's legal team coming for it. Today we are going to be watching Chatter Chipmunk's Wild Frontier Adventure. Reading the description of the video, it says, all Chatter wanted was to pan for gold and maybe strike it rich. But as soon as he stepped off the bus, Chatter ran into champion bully Wallace Jaw, the meanest kid in the world. Which is something they're gonna repeat a lot in this movie, by the way. Um, So just, just remember, Wallace Jaw, meanest kid in the world. And now Chatter's been challenged to a showdown at high noon. Join Chatter and his friends as they search for some way to keep Wallace Jaw from turning Chatter into a fuzzy pair of mittens. So to fast forward to that part, um, Wallace Jaw challenges Chatter to fight at high noon, like it says in the description, but he then says that I'm gonna turn you into a fuzzy pair of mittens. That's a threat! It just gets so much more bizarre in that situation as well because of just some other some other person being there. This Chatter movie left me with a lot of questions while watching it, by the way. This one actually shows the older puppet of Chatter as well, which can look a bit cursed at some points which we'll get to as well and just like last time i'm gonna go through each individual episode and it has five just like the others but will this one be better than the panda one i already know the question to this because i already watched it but you don't you don't see here i am sitting down to watch it eating some pringles there i go but without further ado let's jump into episode one 
when I get back from work, that is. Well, alrighty, I am back from work. So without more further ado, let's let's watch some chatter. Let's let's go do that now. Starting off the first episode, we see a bus coming into our main location for this movie being Silver Dollar City Theme Park, which it is also an actual theme park that's still open today, and it's located in Branson, Missouri, which is telling me that Chatter lives in Missouri, getting closer to know where Chatter is now. <laughs> the group starts coming off the bus, and Chatter is decked out in gold panning gear because he wants to go gold panning, baby. He's got his gold panning helmet, he's got his pick, and his gold panning pan. Chatter will meet up with the rest of the group because he wants to go gold panning right now. And he stumbles upon the backstage area where he sees two elderly couples dancing. But as he's watching it, that someone takes like his helmet. And then one of the elderly women just pick up Chatter, start dancing with him, and I guess she wasn't holding Chatter on as well as she thought because she just throws Chatter so hard, it, he goes outside the building and gets stuck on a little gate. But as Chatter's stuck on that gate, someone takes his pick and pan. As he tries to get unstuck, he tries to throw himself as hard as he can again, and he goes flying onto the carousel. But once he gets off the carousel, he realizes that all his stuff has been stolen. Poor Chatter. How he didn't notice it already? I don't know. <laughs> That's when we get back to his three friends, and Chatter meets up with his friends to tell them his situation. By the way, they never mention these kids' names. They never mention these three kids' names at all. <laughs> so we're gonna name it Yellow Shirt, Pink Shirt, and Keith. But as they're talking, one of the theme park cops hears the situation and comes in to be like, hey, I'm on the case. This is Officer Mickey Fligget. And he's a little clumsy, by the way, a little silly goose. Gets gum stuck in his hat. And that's when we meet Doris, who owns the hat shop at this theme park. And every time, like, they interact with each other, the little harp sound effect plays. Captain Fligget! Captain Fligget! We have a bunch of new hats in. Gotta go, Doris. Does it also happen in like a serious conversation? Like, can you imagine they were just like arguing in the Ikea section and then the harp <laughs> to cheer him up, Ch Chatter's friends try to take Chatter down Marvel Cave, but Chatter's a little afraid of the dark, and he doesn't have his little helmet to, you know, light the way. I don't know, sounds awful dark. Well, sure, it's a cave. Hold on, f you, Harry. No, Henry. See, piss me off, I don't even remember your name now that I gave you. <laughs> so, they take him down to Marvel Cave, and that's when Chatter changes his mind. He's like, no, I'm just gonna go to the gold panning area, just walk over there. That's when Henry rips out a map, and then that's when we get to meet Wallace Jaw, the meanest kid in the world. Oh no, it's Wallace Jaw, the meanest kid in the world. They sound so energetic when they said that too. <laughs> I'm Wallace Jaw, I rip your map. Oh no, it's Wallace Jaw, the meanest kid in the world. And that's when he starts walloping on Blue Shirt. You know, we get our little sound effects gets in front of him so it acts like he's wailing on Henry. But Chatter, he doesn't believe he's the meanest kid in the world. That's when we see that, literally, my opinion, um, <laughs> Wall's jaw assaults Henry. You know, now talking about it, where are like any of like the supervisors? Where are any of them? Any teacher, higher up, parent, guardian, where are they? Cause he just, he's just gonna be running amok throughout this whole movie. And there's no like, clear parent guardian or administrator that's with these kids to just stop Wallace Jaw. So after seeing that, Chad is convinced he must be the meanest kid in the world, but ch poor Chatter should have just kept his little mouth shut because now Wallace Jaw has his eye set out on him and he chases him down Marvel Cave. And instead of like his friends going to help him and stop Wallace Jaw from assaulting him now, they're just like, no, we gotta help out Henry first. Let's get out of here. Also, for some reason, they're like, where did Chatter go? He, he, he just went down the, what? <laughs> he just went straight. There's nothing that we see that implies that there's multiple routes. You just go straight. It's just gonna be dark, but no, they just lose him. But then Chatter is able to get away from Wallace Jaw. So how it's just, and now here we get this almost a minute scene where Chatter is by himself walking down Marvel Cave alone nothing in the background playing no background music no background noises just his echoing voice and then that's when we get introduced to miss scarlet who works at the theme park and i kid you not and i kid you not 
for 13 seconds, it's just her walking down the cave going, Hello? Anybody there? Hello? Hello? Hello over there? And then it pans back to Chatter for three seconds, being all scared and alone. And then we just go back to Scarlet for 10 more seconds. Again, this is a more older Chatter Chipmunk movie, just seeing how it looks. And they're trying to make these episodes like about nine, nine and a half minutes long. And so they have to like figure out something to pad out the runtime. So Scarlet talks to Chatter, trying to comfort him and give him some little, uh, Jesus love, you know, saying stuff how like before Jesus there was um, no light, there was chaos, bad, bad things happening. When Jesus came, Jesus turned on the light. He's the light of the world. And so Scarlet turns off the light and it scares poor Chatter. And she starts antagonizing him like, oh yeah, it used to be creepy, cold, dark. You know, people were saying cusslers like crap and dang and fuck. <laughs> but yeah. And then Wallace Jaw comes back, the meanest kid in the world! They start arguing, and that's when Wallace Jaw challenges Chatter to a fight at high noon. And that's when Wallace Jaw tells the audience, saying that he's gonna turn Chatter into a fuzzy pair of mittens. I'll make mittens out of him. <laughs> Remember earlier I said that I was gonna bring this back up? The reason why is because Scarlet's right there and does nothing about it, doesn't diffuse the situation, just looks at Chad and is like, go on, you got this, say what you need to say. This is what I'm thinking. Are the adults scared of Wallace Jaw? Is he just the meanest person in the world, actually? Is just like someone's kid just gonna get beaten up by Wallace Jaw, and then the dad's gonna be like, oh, I can't do anything about that. That's Wallace Jaw, that's the meanest kid in the world. <laughs> <laughs> but that is going to be the end of episode one. Before I go on, that's going to be the most I'm going to talk about any episode because as the episodes go on, I have less and less to talk about because like I said, there's just going to be moments where they're just trying to pad out the runtime. But let's get into episode two. Episode two starts off with Chatter Chipmunk walking around all by his lonesome and then that's when he encounters a guy working a little beanbag toss game and he tells Chatter that he's got to hit the hat off that guy and it's going to cost 25 cents for three bean bags. Um, three bean bags for me cost me 10 bucks. Inflation, am I right? <laughs> and on all three, he does these insane shots with the third one finally landing. The funniest part is that they just add random sound effects. Three. And it just reminds me of like those memes of like vine sound effects where it's just playing all those at once. Three. But like I said, Chatter hits the hat and he wins a slingshot that he said that he could use against Wallace Jaw. Now I can take care of that Wallace Jaw. But after that's over, it just shows like a little montage of stuff around the theme park and then it just cuts to this random lady. Fun, fun house. <laughs> yeah, um, excuse me, is this random lady in charge of the kids? Cause why is she just not doing anything? Why, why are not, whoa, whoa, wait, 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 wait. Why are the kids just not going to her? Why are the kids just not telling them that Wallace Jaw is being a dick? Ah. God, they're just, it's, the adults don't do anything in this movie. They do, the adults don't do nothing, and it's just so confusing. <laughs> but anywho, Chatter and his friends go through a little mirror funhouse area, and he thinks, oh, I could just look scary. I can scare Wallace Jaw so he can get away from me. So Chatter comes out of the little wacky mirror, tries to be scary, Hi. but his friends just tell him Are that he's not scary, Hi. and they go to Chatter's reaction to that, <laughs> and I just love the little dead space in between it, before he just goes, shoot! Just kind of fuzzy. Nuts. And that's when Officer Fligit comes out of the mirror room to just tell him that he's not doing good right now. He hasn't had any success getting Wallace Jaw. It just shows how incompetent he is at his job. So incompetent that he has the kids and Chatter become deputies. Why would you make Chatter the deputy? He's the one that's getting chased after. He's the one that's going to get his shit rocked. But after he points the kids to deputies, Wallace Jaw on a tree somehow, throws a little ice cream cone at Fli Fligid, fuck, fuck. Beep, beep. <laughs> throws an ice cream cone at Officer Fligid's hat, ruining it. And that confirms to him he really is the meanest kid in the world. He is the meanest kid in the world. And the part that kills me is that Officer Fligid then goes, hey, if you see Wallace Jaw, let me know. And going back to him making the kids deputies, is he the only park cop around? 
is there nobody else? Why do they? Why would? Why would they do that? That's such a. That's a dumb idea. That's so stupid. Why would they? Why would a theme park do that? But after that, Chattered then comes up with an idea. So he goes to a little food stand to buy one of everything. It's just funny to me where you just see like the little hand just come to pull it. But as Chatter sits down, Scarlet comes back, and Chatter tells Scarlet the plan which was to invite Wallace Jaw on a picnic and then make him ride the roller coaster 10 times. Make him throw up everywhere. Scarlet reasonably mentions that he should try a different plan. And that's when Scarlet mentions the story between Jesus and Zacchaeus. And while Scarlet's telling Chatter that, she asks him, do you wish you were taller? And that's where we do another awkward silence cut before Chatter goes into a little thought bubble of him being taller. And Oh my god, because they just have the puppet just go from a little short neck to a long neck, which is so weird. <laughs> Can you imagine that happened in real life too? Hey man, you gotta be this tall to ride the ride. <laughs> okay. Oh my god. Oh my god. Oh my god. Stop! Stop! Oh my god! Yes! 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 Oh, cool. Sick. But yeah, Scarlet is trying to tell Chatter that you should seek for forgiveness. You should forgive Wallace Jaw for being a, a bully and trying to beat him up and also steal your stuff. <laughs> yeah. But that's when Wallace Jaw comes back in and he steals Chatter's food and runs away in front of adults and they do nothing either. Why? What the fuck? <laughs> See, this is just proving my theory that not even the adults want to mess with Wallace Jaw. <laughs> But that's going to be the end of episode 2. Now on to episode 3. Episode 3 starts with a little wacky intro, you know? I'm trying to be quirky. <laughs> and then that's when we get Chatter going up to a fire eater because he sees that and is like, I can love Wallace Jaw from a distance. <laughs> He's going to light Wallace Jaw on fire. Honestly, nothing happens from this. So I'm just going to skip the fire eater part. But you know what I'm not going to skip? Wallace Jaw coming back in and chase down Chatter. Um... It's not high noon yet. Why? You're not abiding by the rules that you set. You're going to fight at high noon, not at 11 o'clock. You, me, we're duking it out at high noon. You're on. High noon starts now. Wait, 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 wait. <coughs> but as Chad is getting chased by him, there's a cart that gets in his way. So he thinks, I could jump in front of it. No, he doesn't. He dives head first into the cart and gets his head stuck. Hey guys, this is editing me. Um, I was just editing this part and I never noticed this, this just, gee, <laughs> God, what the f- Oh my God, I have no words. That, that, that's, that's all I'm gonna say. It's late. Okay, back to, back to, back to the video. This is a wooden cart and he just takes it full head on. He's fine, he's fine. I know he's a, Puppet? Like, for any other chipmunk, he'd die. But he's already defying anything called normality. He's a big talking chipmunk. <laughs> Wallace Jaw looks into the cart, can't find him. He's an NPC as well. Must have been the win. Chatter, happy that he got away from him. And then we pan to these three workers that are just very depressed, who are probably getting paid below minimum wage. That's when Chatter goes up to the stereotypical big dummy one and says, Hey, you know what would be fun? We have a parade. And so, they play a little song, a little Jesus song. Jesus is the leader, Jesus is my love type beat. You know, and everybody's busting it down. Everybody's having a good time. But once Chatter leaves, the the workers just go back to being depressed. Chatter runs into Scarlet again and talks to Scarlet about more Jesus stuff. To summarize it in this one, Scarlet is telling Chatter to love him like Jesus. In this talk, Scarlet tells Chatter to love Wallace Jaw like he loves Jesus. Give him that Jesus love. And something I never brought up is the end questions, even in the Mystery Pandas one. But these ones just seem so... <laughs> they just seem so much more funnier to me. The first one's like, will Chatter be nice to Wallace Jaw? And then the second one, <laughs> it leads up to, will Wallace Jaw beat him up anyway? Just for practice? Can you imagine Chatter does be nice to Wallace Jaw and Wallace Jaw gives back the love? But you know... Wallace Jaw is a quota to fill. He's got to beat him up just for practice, maybe. <laughs> That's end of episode three already. Let's go on to episode four. Episode four does a little wacky, you know, intro again, and then shows the random lady coming out the hat store with this big goofy hat. Great hat. Okay. <laughs> I'm inclined to think that this lady 
is just they just need something funny for the kids to just laugh at this i i refuse to believe this is one of like the administrators for this field trip but you know who also passes by the hat store officer fluid you know who's at the hat store right now Lady Doris. And the interaction for Doris to get Officer Fligget into the hat store, to me, comes off a bit mature. Come in and see our new hats. Oh, I guess I need a new hat anyway. He goes into the store and that's when we finally get a montage that I can dub the hat montage. They try on goofy hats with one of them looking like Chatter's hat. So I had this whole theory. So my first theory was that Doris is the one that was actually stealing Chatter's hat. He, she at least stole Chatter's hat and just is now selling it. And I thought there was gonna be something like, oh my God, Doris is the th hat thief at least. But no, what's the point of Doris then? But then my second theory was that Wallace Jaw is the one that stole everything, which he did, but he's actually selling it to Doris third market, you know, to make a little cash on the side. And then Doris gets blamed for it, but it was really Wallace Jaw. Once the hat montage ends, the pink shirt girl tells Officer Fligget that they saw Wallace Jaw. So now Officer Fligget and the kids are going to chase down Wallace Jaw. And they chase Wallace Jaw down to one of the rides. So you think, they got him. There's nobody else in front of them that stops them from getting Wallace Jaw. There's no exit that he can get out of unless he jumps over it. If he gets on the ride, they just wait at the exit. What did they do? They get on the ride. Why would they get on the ride? And they lose him. They lose him. And then they give up. Why? The part that kills me though is that when Officer Fligit gets on the ride, he just forgets what he's doing. He's like, I, he's an NPC. He's an NPC. Oh my god. Like, Wallace Josh is like, nah, 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 nah. And then Officer Fligit is like, where did he go? And then the kids are like, bitch. He's right there. Just stop the ride. Don't even get on the ride. Just wait at the exit. Have someone wait at the entrance. Huh. Now we go back to Chatter. He's giving himself a pep talk, you know, how he's gonna handle Wallace Jaw. He's using the slingshot as a phone. Then he points a slingshot, and guess who's there? He's using the slingshot as a phone for some reason because he's never seen a slingshot in his life. He points the slingshot, and guess who's in front of him? Wallace Jaw. And guess what? This time, it's high noon. It's high noon. So now they're gonna face off. They're doing the little battle poses. Wallace Jaw's got his battle pose and this, like I said, it's an older puppet, but the proportions on it is just so goofy. They gave him these skinny ass legs, this big belly, and just this little like stance. He looks like he's gonna take a shit. <laughs> he looks like he's constipated. He looks like he needs to go to the bathroom. <laughs> Do you need to use the bathroom? No. No? Are you okay? Let's let's get back to the fight. We can like take a break right now, you know? It looks like you're gonna use the bathroom. Hey, you stop that. You stop that one, go. I'm not, I'm just I'm just stop being me, I'm just being honest. Down. You literally you what, what is the pose then? I mean, just change up the pose. Just just do a different little pose. He really is the meanest kid in the world. Who are you talking to? And the adults are not even trying to get on this. The fear of Wallace Jaw spreads throughout the theme park. And after an intense stare down, he just Yoink! grabs the slingshot from him and Chatter's just like, oh, no, 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 that was a gift for you. That was a gift. But then Chatter tells Wallace Jaw that he has a free gift for him. That gift is oh. Jesus's love. Wallace Jaw, in complete shock, is like, oh my God, Jesus loves me? And that, that, that stops, that stops Wallace Jaw from being rude. He literally, Chatter converts Wallace Jaw into being a Christian and turn over a new leaf. You know, me personally, if I was Wallace Jaw, I'd beat the hell out of him. I wouldn't know what he's talking about. I just, boom, boom. I just beat the hell out of him. But after Chatter tells Wallace Jaw that Jesus loves him, he convinces Wallace Jaw to go to Officer Fligid to ask for forgiveness. Wallace Jaw doesn't know, but Chatter's like, hey, I'm your friend. I got you. And then that's the end of the episode. But I want to mention the end questions on this one too. The end questions for this one is what'll happen if Captain Fligit catches up with Wallace Jaw? And then they follow it up with the same question, but just flipping it around. So now it's what'll happen if Wallace Jaw catches up with Captain Fligit? I just imagine that if Wallace Jaw catches up to Fligit, he's gonna apologize, ask for forgiveness. But if Captain Fligit gets to Wallace Jaw, He's gonna beat the hell out of him. He's gonna beat up Wallace Jaw. That's for ruining his favorite hat. Let's just, let's just end this. Let's go to episode five. Episode five. We cut to Chatter and Wallace 
literally talking about Jesus. They're having a Jesus moment with each other, which is very sweet, honestly. This Jesus stuff is good news. The rat officer flitches his place, you know, where he's chilling at, where he gave up. Wallace Jolly, he's like, I don't know, I'm still nervous, but Chowder gives him that pep talk and he goes inside and he's in there for a long ass time. And for 40 seconds, you just have Chatter just pacing back and forth, but in the goofiest way possible. They angled the camera at a worst possible angle for this puppet. Cause you know, it's just a hand that's in there. And the hand, you can do so much for it when you're turning a puppet. He does this most awkward turn ever. Just, just watch this, just watch this. <laughs> can you imagine someone just pacing back and forth? He's just like. But 40 seconds later, after Flidget is beating the hell out of Wallace Jaw, Wallace Jaw comes down and he's like, Hey, Flidget forgave me. Let's go, boys. And Flidget, he's like, This calls for a celebration. Let's go, go panning. I'm ready to try out my new hat. And that's when Wallace Jaw remembers that he's got to give Chatter his gear back. Oh, I just remembered. Oh, boy. But once he has his gear back, Chatter goes gold panning. Finally, it's really funny to me how the guy working there. I don't think he was an actor I think he was an actual worker there because he's just handing out the little gold pan stuff to everybody And then when his chatters turn he's just standing. There. He's like do I give it to you? Who do I do I give it to her? He doesn't know what to do <laughs> He's just trying to do his job and he doesn't know what to do But yeah gold painting montage and that is gonna be the end of Chatter Chipmunk's Wild Frontier adventure. If you were to look at the Wild Frontier, then watch Missing Pandas, there was definitely an improvement going from Frontier to Pandas. Like for example, the editing and sound effects. That, that's, that's a big one. <laughs> Both Pandas and Frontier Adventure had their little awkward, funny, cringe moments, but in Frontier, it's a bit more noticeable and that has to do with the age of it. Also, it just felt kind of less realistic that the um, adults could not stop Wallace Jaw, that Chatter had to be the one to stop it, and they only let Chatter do it. That poor chipmunk, he's already been through enough, didn't we watch Missing Pandas already? The side characters were okay, nothing noticeable, no pops, that's, that's something they can't really compete against. Like, I think the best one is Wallace Jaw, but I'm gonna say this for the last time, it just felt like they were trying to pad out the runtime with anything possible to make it hit that nine and a half minute mark. Like the parade, the fire eater, the wacky intro part, the little um, awkward editing moments where it's just silent. <laughs> but to choose which is better between Pandas and Frontier Adventure, I'd have to go with Pandas. I think it's just better. And if you guys were wondering, like I would rate it on a scale of one to 10, I feel like for these, I can't really give it like a one to 10 rating, just like a A, B, C, D tier type of rating. So for Frontier Adventure, I'm gonna give it a C, a high C plus. And then for Missing Pandas, for now, it's gonna be at a B. There you go. But that's where I'm gonna end this video. Thank you guys for watching. Comment below what you would have done in Chatter Shoes, or if you wanna see more Chatter content because there's a lot more out there that I can find. I'm going to be the chatter content creator for you guys. So let's, let's keep it. Let's keep that going. Also subscribe as now put a smile on my face. Now, if you'll excuse me, I got to get my house ready for Jesus. We're having meatloaf, but uh, yeah. Okay. Bye. Don't you love Jesus?